Hey everyone, in this video we're going to add Webpack to our project and then we're going to use the Webpack Workbox plugin as most of us are using Webpack in our front-end projects. The reason why I started without Webpack is because I wanted you to understand how Workbox works separately and then how you can integrate it with Webpack. So let's get started. So I've got the same project as before and I'm going to start by installing Webpack and the Webpack CLI. When it completes, I'm going to create a new SRC folder and inside of this SRC folder, I'm going to put my app.js, index.html and src.sw.js. And I'm going to delete the sw.js file because it's going to be automatically generated inside the dist folder once we configure Webpack. Now let's start by configuring Webpack. So I'm going to create the configuration file and then I'm going to go to package.json and change the build command to simply be Webpack. Now let's go into Webpack config and let's start by exporting the configuration. So we need to define the mode. The mode could be either development or production. I'm going to do a very basic configuration now. So we're always going to run in production mode right now. And then I have to define the entry point. So what is the first file that Webpack should process? And that's going to be src app.js. So let's say src app.js. And then we need to define the output and for the output, we need to define the file name, which is going to be app.js and the path. And for the path, I'm going to have to import path. And then that's going to be path.resolve, the current dir name and dist. So whenever we run Webpack, we're going to have a new folder called dist, which is going to have the app.js file. Now we also have an index.html file, which we need to process. But right now, because this is just a tutorial, I don't have anything particular that I want to process. So I just want to copy it into the dist folder. So that's why I'm going to have to install copy webpack plugin and save it as a dependency. All right, so now I can import it. So copy webpack plugin. And then I can add a new plugin. So plugins and then new copy webpack plugin and then from so i want to copy the src index.html to index.html in a real project you're most likely going to be using something like webpack html plugin but here i just want to copy it into the dist folder so now let's take a look let's go back to the command line and run npm run build and let's take a look at the new dist folder we now have an index.html and an app.js. And if I show you what the app.js looks like, you see this is the same app.js file that we had. It's now minified because we're using mode production. All right, so that was just to set up Webpack. And now I'm going to set up Workbox Webpack. So to set up Workbox Webpack, I have to install Workbox Webpack plugin. And now I can import it. So Workbox Webpack plugin. And then we add it as a new plugin here. And then you've got two plugins. You either use Generate SW, which we've used two videos ago, or you could use Inject Manifest, which is a little bit more advanced. And that's the one I'm going to use in this video. And then you have to pass in some configuration for it, which is going to be the source of your service worker file. In my case, it's in src, src sw.js. And then the destination for it, so sw.dest, and then that's going to be sw.js. This is all the configuration that you need to have in Webpack. Now I'm going to go in src sw.js and now I have to remove the import scripts because you're going to see this is going to be automatically imported by the Webpack Workbox plugin. So let's remove this. And one more thing, instead of pre-cache and route, instead of having empty array, we're now going to have another placeholder, which is self dot underscore underscore pre-cache manifest. And you'll understand in a second where this variable comes from. Now, in the previous video, I told you that if you want to automatically skip waiting, you can now run workbox.skip waiting. What skip waiting does is that it tells the service worker to activate as soon as possible. I wouldn't recommend you use it unless you have a specific use case for it. The reason why I was confused by it is because I used to use the predecessor of workbox, which is SW Precache, which had it automatically. But I would only use it unless I have a specific use case. So I'm going to comment this out. Now let's go back to the terminal and run npm run build. And let's take a look at the dist folder. We now have two new files. So let's see, precache manifest, which has a self 
underscore underscore precache manifest. So this is the placeholder that we put in SW.js. And these are all the information that Workbox needs to precache these two files. And now in this SW.js, we just have our service worker, which imports our precache manifest and imports Workbox from CDN automatically. So now I'm simply gonna go into the dist folder and run a serve command. And let's go back to the browser and go to localhost port 8000. And I've been using localhost port 8000 in the past few videos. So I definitely have some service workers installed. So I'm just gonna go to application, clear site data, and then go to network tab and reload. And you're gonna see this is our new service worker being installed over here. That's great and you can reload another time so you can see the users are being served from the service worker so now if i go offline and i reload our app just works offline again in this video you learned how to use the webpack workbox plugin and in the next video we're going to learn about the web app manifest which is actually the easiest of all and you're going to learn in the next video why i left it until the end see you next week